I only see two of you, but I see three cameras on. Yeah, Stefan. Yeah, Chris. It's Chris is on, and Stefan is on, and yep, I see them. And uh, I don't see them. And we have a quorum. And Marcus said he's not available, and I hadn't heard from Joe. And um, and I've been asking too about filling our vacancies, but uh, that's not going anywhere quickly. Okay. Um. All right. Let me just find the little note to. Okay. Uh, the language, which I think is like close enough. So the language is just says, you know, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and extended by the chapter 22 of the acts of 22, this meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or phone and no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately ac access the proceedings in real time. All right. Well, thank you. Let's so let's do a roll call just so Amber will have that. Um, so I'm here, Kim Tracy. Kim Tremblay. Uh, yep. Christine Lindstrom. Okay. Haunted. All right. And Stefan's here and uh, Marcus and Joe are not here, Amber. And of course, Guilford is here. Okay. So so the first item, I don't see anybody like in our waiting room. Nope. Um, our first item of business I put on the agenda was just an update on the combined meeting with TSO and the Disability Access Advisory Committee about the proposed redesign of Southeast Street. Um, I was told by Andy Steinberg today that that meeting is gonna be scheduled for December 12th at 5 p.m. Um, from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And it sounds like it's going to be a hybrid meeting where it will take place in the town room so that people can see maps, but that there will also be remote attendance. Gilford, Great. does that sound right to you? I can't, we can't hear you. Eat the time. So it's uh, December 12th at 5 p.m. That's the first I've heard of it, so. Okay. I know that they were looking at a few different times there had been that survey. I think one issue is that if you want to have the hybrid meeting, the place to do that is in the town room. Um, I was also told that that meeting does have a hard stop at 6.30 p.m. because there is a different meeting scheduled at 6.30 p.m. given that it's a town room with the hybrid capabilities. Um, and so that with that in mind, this will not be a general forum where there can be lots of comments and other questions that they will be because the consultant will be there. They will primarily be looking, you know, at the questions that were submitted earlier and that TSO has been compiling. But it sounds like there may be opportunity later on in the process for there to be a forum or other meeting where um, there can be like a much longer discussion and many more questions. But they're, but they're just working for our input, correct? Ours in the that. Yeah, I mean, so I did submit some questions. Um, you know, if we had anything specific, we know that we want to bring up then. Um, we can do that yeah. as a group. Um, I was just asking some clear clarification questions. Um, I mean, does anybody have any? I mean, I was just asking logistically, like how it works and and some of the oh. models about, I mean, we've talked about it before, like you had raised Kim, the question about like, will the traffic back up, you know, at these smaller roundabouts that are in the middle, if everybody's in them, like how does that flow actually work and yeah. things, so. I would like to invite one or two other people who aren't on the committee, would that be okay? Or would that be run by Andy? How would that work? I mean, I believe it's a meeting that's open to the public. It is open okay. to the public. Yeah. I mean, okay. what I'm saying is I just don't think that the format is going to allow for a lot of forum type questions. Like, yeah, you know, just, just and especially with the consultant being there as well. Um, but I do hope that members of the public will, you know, if they don't come to watch it in person, that they also can like, watch, you know, be on Zoom or also check out the recording later and to get information out about the project to the wider community, I'm sure. In particular, that Fort River parents would be very interested. 
So. Well, it's actually, it's Fort River and Wildwood. Right. Like, and Wildwood, when it opens, yeah. it's everybody. Exactly. And is the plan still, it sounds like the plan is still for the opening to be in the fall of 2026. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, right. Because there's been the. There's right. The yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you wouldn't. I mean, I guess, practically speaking, you wouldn't change schools like in the middle of the school year, right? It would either have to be 2026 or 2027. Yeah, I mean, they may not be done is the issue. Is no, why that's true. The well, school. that's what I was wondering, right? But you wouldn't typically say, okay, everybody go home, you know, on December break. Okay, now we have a new, I mean, I don't know. It seems disruptive to change in the middle of the school year, especially when you're consolidating the schools. But Is, um... What's the plan, the interim plan for the kids who are at that school? They stay there. It doesn't, it doesn't get demolished before the new school gets made. The, the, yeah. The goal is to start building the new school, build the new school, then oh, move okay. everybody into the new school and then demolish the old school. Got it. I mean, it is nice that that site has that room. So, yeah. Okay, great. So it sounds like, um, I mean, I don't know who from TAC is available to come to that meeting. I know I'm available. And Kim, are you available for yep. the meeting? Yeah, I'll make it. Okay, great. So at least we'll have three of us. Um, I know that the meeting right after this forum is the Charter Review Commission, which Marcus is a member of. So maybe he can be there as well if he wants to spend many hours. Oh, you mean right room. after that meeting? Right, yeah, 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 okay. on the 12th. Um, cool. Anyway. Well, he, he should have some good insight too, Ben. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And um, all right. So then the next thing on the agenda were safe routes to school updates. Um, and I just wanted to share about that the school zones for the middle school and the high school were approved by the town council on Monday. Cool. Guilford, were you on vacation? Were you away then or were you at the meeting? No, I was gone. Oh, okay. Um. So, of course, so TSO took action on it, you know, based on the maps and the memos that Jason Skills prepared, and which laid it out pretty well. And TSO um, approved it anonymous, unanimously at um, the TSO meeting, which I guess was last week. And then it was approved by the council as well. Um, so I did include just as a reference, just like where they're proposed, where the beginning and the end of the school zones is proposed to be. Um, and I know that the original, the council sponsors who brought this forward, which were uh, Devlin Gothier, uh, Kathy Shane, and um, Lynn Griesmer, that they had proposed certain times, but that wasn't included in what was adopted. So that's still left up to the schools and the town's discretion. It sound, the TSO report talked about how Guilford and um, the town manager typically We'll make those decisions with input from the schools. Does that sound right, Guilford? Is it is it easy? Yes, that's what they said. Is it easy to like like you know because sometimes there are like half days or or late um, dismissal? I mean, it changes. Is it easy to like change those zones, or do you do that, or is that not done, or whatever? technically if you have the people to do it you could is it you can either try to program it for the whole year if you know what yeah. the whole schedule is uh -huh. okay. or you could um do it every day or every other day wow so like for example like i had raised the question guilford about um you know the calendar comes out usually by early spring for the next year. And for example, that it's part of the teacher's contract that there is a half day, at least like one half day each month for professional development. And um, yeah. and so and so those are all, it's all predetermined like when those times are. So is that something where it can be, I know that you can control them, like DPW has access to them all remotely. Is that something that can be programmed out in them? that you'll have it, um, you'll have them activated for early dismissal. It, it just requires having an, an ability to do it. And then yeah, to, got it. 
change it if we need to change it. So possibly it's easy to do, but it's much easier just put one time and a start date and a stop date. Of course, yeah. Oh, so do you do you do, do a stop date and a start? So you don't have them on during the summer? The ones we have now, I have the ability we have the ability to actually control them. Okay. The, yeah. So huh? Yeah, you can turn them off at the um Thanks. you can turn them off at the end of the school year, you can turn them on during the school okay. year. So are they on during like school vacation weeks? Uh, actually, yes, because we don't program them in the school vacation weeks. Okay. <laughs> All right. I can do an update otherwise on other aspects of Safe Roots. If yeah, makes I, I did just have a question, too, just about, I know that um, just with the elementary school times, like, I know that the... I mean, it sounds like the middle school and the high school school zone signs won't be put in until the spring. Is that Does that sound right, Guilford? Yeah, and we've heard nothing and, back from the school about what they want for times. And and is there and there's funding to put in the signs and everything in the spring? Um, I assume it's going to come out of the money that was appropriated in that okay. school thing. School thing? Um, yeah, there's a capital item for some of this stuff. So, so one thing with, like, if you look at them, if you look at the element, I mean, I know that this is like up to the schools to decide um, and you and the town manager, but when I looked at the times about when the lights are flashing compared to when students, particularly if you have students walking or biking to school, like when they would actually be yeah. coming towards school and so on, like, it seemed like they could be adjusted slightly to better accommodate and support, you know, safe routes to school and walking and biking. Like, for example, um, the um, like on the regular school days, right, that the elementary school that they start school at 810 in the morning and that the school zones don't start flashing until eight. So that's fine, I think, for people who are taking the students who are taking the buses, because a lot of the buses, the schedules are set up to arrive right around 810. But again, if students are walking or biking or, you know, some school students like to come on to the playground beforehand or whatever it does mean that the lights are not flashing until they've already arrived at school. And and that was my experience when I participated in the safe reach to school, like the IWOC day, is that most of the IWOC groups were arriving at the school like before the they were flashing. So that was a little unfortunate. And I guess if people were going to bike and walk regularly, it would be nice if they were flashing when they were doing so. So just my suggestion. <laughs> yeah. And so, oh, um, and I think too, just yeah. after school, right? I think like my experience when I was an elementary school parent is for walkers and bikers and even other families that if the weather is good, that families are staying after school and they're playing on the playground and things like that. And so um, I think like right now, the time is set to the beacon, the beacon stop flashing like 20 minutes after dismissal. But if it was a day when there are going to be a lot of families and students still on the campus, it might be nice to extend it at least like half an hour or an hour or something. So, I mean, I just raised that for consideration, but thank you. And uh, and we do have suggestions. I mean, if if um, if um anybody's interested in input, like we could also make suggestions about either TAC or myself could make suggestions about the middle school and high school times. But you, you also have to pay attention to when they're legally allowed to be on campus. Mm, I understand that, yeah. But like, for example, I mean, there's the program on, well, a lot of the schools, they do have a sign and it says like, you can't get into the building until a certain hour, but they do serve for students. They do serve, like, they also serve breakfast. Yeah. So there is an incentive for students to come earlier than the official start time of the day. Yeah. And I know, for example, on like a lot of the bus routes, and I know my the bus route that my kid takes in particular, like they're always arriving at school, like right at the start of the school day or even like after the start of the school day, the buses are sometimes late because of the elementary runs. And that that means he never gets like the school breakfast, but a lot of families and students are incentivized to come early enough to get breakfast before the first period starts. Yeah, that's very true. So, yeah. but yeah, I agree. I mean, the schools do not want people in the building until a certain time. 
So, okay. And then Chris, do you want to give us some updates about Safe Reese's School too? Not much. Um, Corey and I met with um, Dr. Z's staff um, again earlier this week. Um, I don't see Dr. Z's office I don't see interest in being a leader on um, this stuff. I think they just continue to describe themselves as reacting to, um, you know, their situation. So, um, which is a little unfortunate. I've been asking for them to be willing to spearhead a, the bike rodeo. And, um, yeah, I don't think that that's going to happen. So I, um, do feel like I need to maybe have one more conversation with a couple other um, entities in town, municipal, um, you know, authorities in town to see if anybody would be willing to kind of chair a group that would do a district wide bike rodeo in May. Um, it's not that they're opposed to it. It's I just, I think they're, I think Dr. Z and the staff continue to just be overwhelmed by the amount of work that um, needs to happen just to kind of move the whole district forward. So um, that is, uh, you know, sad, but true. And, you know, is what it is. I, the other thing that I might do is just ask um, one of the schools to have a bike rodeo and just open it up to other schools uh, where we know we have the PE teachers at the elementary schools in particular who are pretty motivated around this stuff. and. You know, um, Tori was at Crocker Farm <laughs> last week teaching bike and um, pedestrian safety. Oh, cool. Bye. Good morning. Take good notes. Um, so uh, anyway, that's another possibility, but um, I'll just keep everybody posted. That's definitely something the parents would like. Um, the Dr. She's office definitely wanted to see the Fort River traffic pattern. Um, they hadn't seen that yet. So uh, I sent that along. Um, Guilford, I don't know if it makes sense for you or who would who would be the per the the person extending the invite to the superintendent's office to come to the December 12th meeting? Not me, but I'll ask. Would you? Yeah. Um, or if you don't mind just shooting a note, I, I, I don't know who you're following up with. I assume it's Rupert, um, you know, maybe a couple other people about the timing of the, the flashing beacons. But um, I think it would definitely be important to have somebody in the room from the school. Personally, I don't think the schools give her, but uh, sorry. Um I don't think they care. Yeah, um, no, you might you might be right, but you know, if they're just, the invitation, they're if just the going to demand they're just going to demand the town take care of it is what they've pretty much said, and their designers have said that the school staff has said that it's up to the town to take care of everything outside the property, and they don't really. And so, Doctor Z, if she actually does say she wants to, it would be a very it would be amazing because okay. everyone else has said they don't care. Noted. The town can take care of it. The town can spend their money to do it. But it's, I still think it seems like, I mean, the people that Chris talked to, right, recently this week, that they were suggesting that they would want more information. So I still think it's worth extending the invitation and sharing what information is available. I mean, I do agree that the schools have a lot going on in the buildings and on the building property. And that yeah. they're not in charge of the roads outside of the school, but, you know, some of the traffic pattern is impacting like the driveways to and from and so on. So, yeah, I, I'll I mean, ask. yeah, I mean, all, all they can do is get an invitation and decide to ignore it if they want to. But at least the invitation has been extended. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Tori also spoke to um, there's some interest in the possibility of a health and wellness policy um, going through school board that would um, make sure that pedestrian and bike safety is always being taught in perpetuity at, in the elementary school PE classes. 
That's cool. So, um, you know, I think Tori may or may not find some traction there um, in terms of what we can engage the superintendent's office on, but um, that's out there as a possibility. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, Crocker Farm uh, applied for a little bike grant, bike rack grant from Safe Routes to School recently, which is exciting. And, um, you know, we're at where we're at. Um, since you're here, Guilford, I did want to ask if you uh, guys have applied to Safe Routes for an infrastructure grant or how you're thinking about that, where where you're at in the process with the there's possibility a, of an infrastructure grant. I imagine they will apply for one, but there's nothing to apply for now. Right. Um, yeah, so that's where things stand at the moment. And, um, you know, my top priority is just gonna try to make a bike rodeo happen amongst a set of us in a very collegial way. Um, if that doesn't happen, then my plan B is to find a school to host it and then just try to get everybody else to glom on. I hope to have that figured out by the end of the year. So, Chris, I was wondering, so I know that, and maybe you've already talked to them, but didn't the police department used to host Spike Radios? Is that something yeah, that they're still interested it, um, in, like Bill Laramie or whoever it was? Yeah, I talked to Bill um, a while ago. I can definitely give him another call. I don't think that they um, they felt uh, sort of spurned and alienated by the schools. <laughs> um, okay. So I think they, you know, he sort of termed it that they did and worked well on the bike rodeos for a while. And then it just became harder and harder and more and more fell on the APD to make it happen. Yeah. And finally the APD just sort of stopped. So, um, well, or, or, you know, I think about too, how there's now these community programs that are done like with like the one in the morning at the schools, right. It's done with the police department and, with the rec, the Amherst rec, and I don't know. It yeah, just seems I think that like having really those kind of like community partners, I know that some of it is grant based, but yeah, it exactly. seems like they might, they might be interested or something, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely have asked point blank. I asked um, Gabe Ting before he actually got the tap, you know, when he was interim, I asked him. So um, I can, I can go back and ask again. Um, yeah. and then I can ask, um, Guilford Mooring right. from the DPW again as well. Uh, so I'll well, do that yeah, I mean, and we'll see where and we stand. There was that one that used to be a crocker. I don't know how many years it was, but it was done as part of, with the after school program and they did it with Morse Hill and, um, Morse Hill provided bikes. Things. That's great. Yeah, I mean, there's oh, actually a lot of um, Wildwood PGO is really interested in um, in participating. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I mean, I don't know if what if Morse Hill would be interested again in doing it too. It seemed yeah, like a really great program, but I don't. Um, I think that that might be weird to ask an entity to lead it, you know, from outside of Amherst. But the bike club at Cracker Farm. Oh, right. Is, yeah, that's true. Is, um, run by Judah Hughes. So, um, and Peter Moore. So a parent and a fifth grade teacher. Mm -hmm. So I think that's my plan B is um, they would totally do it in a, in a heartbeat. Um, and I know that they've brought it up separately with Tori. Right. So I think it's just... Um, you know, it would be a shame if we can't pull something together for the district because there seems to be interest dispersed throughout all the schools. But um, I'm more than happy to work with a school that's excited to lead and, and make it happen. So we'll we'll see how it shakes I out. I like that Crocker idea. The other thing, too, is that Crocker has like a good space for it, um, practically speaking, because they have like the second driveway. I don't know. I mean, maybe it doesn't matter. Right. But they have the driveway.
Shea Street. And so what they've done before, right, is you would just close that that entrance <laughs> and let like the kids use that whole section of road, you know, that it's not, you're not in the same space as like parents driving and staff driving and buses and so on like that, that you could just say, this is a bike area. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, so. I think um, the thing, is, the thing that's uh, annoying to me is, uh, you know, it's neither here nor there, but the bike rodeo, it literally, there's a how to, there's a kit, there's Tori. I mean, there's so many resources to be able to kind of plug in and make something cool happen. Uh, we've got parent enthusiasm and volunteers. We've got money mm -hmm. <laughs> from the Wildwood PGO. So, you know, there's just a lot there that if we um, just had the right group who would be willing to sort of step up and plan it and make it happen. Well, and maybe the other PGOs would be willing to support it as well. You know, it's wonder, possible if you reach out to them. Um, anyway, does the Amherst um, Police Department have a bike patrol? They do. Well, and they yeah. and they have an officer. They had a bike officer um, who yeah, rode Casey. with the. I have, I have talked with, to Casey. Yeah, and he too. he rode with the group that came to Crocker, starting at the South Amherst Common. Okay. Um, and he's like pretty excited to be the bike officer and he's been doing it for a while. And, yeah, he's and great. he seemed pretty he great. Also, and he also rode with the fifth grade from Fort River last year to um the municipal building. So um I did actually ask him and last year he did not feel in a position to say yes. What about the um UMass PD? I mean, it's true. State police, but yeah. maybe they have an initiative to get involved with the local municipalities, yeah. you know, because they do yeah. definitely have a bike patrol as well. And they do other youth outreach programming, like as I was saying with the Amherst Rec. And um, yeah. Because they would be good to lead it too. And know? they also run a summer program. Yeah, cool. No, that's a good idea. I can definitely put them on the list. Um, we just need uh, one of the departments to be a convener. Mm -hmm. So, Guilford, you can expect <laughs> to hear from me soon. We don't need to have the conversation on in the TAC committee at this point, but I this is what going to be my request that I'll be making of all these players. Well, and I think it, I'm excited. I mean, the nice thing I think about doing the bike road uh, sort of advertising at the same time that we're advertising the bike to walk but yeah. in yeah. the spring is that I mean it does seem like there is momentum now with these elementary school parents and there's this critical mass of them who are supporting these days and we're pulling in more kids all the time right that we had the most I think this was the third time that it's happened that like it happened twice last year in this fall and so that that is also like an audience who would be willing, not that they would necessarily be willing to like step up and help organize, but that they'd be willing to participate and, and just kind of grow it too. And, and it's, it's great to see that it's great to see that Tori is doing more of this curriculum stuff Um, that, you know, she has been in touch with all three of the Amherst elementary schools. I think she's also working with Pelham. I mean, she covers her territory covers the all four Western mass counties. So, I mean, and I also see her like come up at like it's you know walk by Springfield events and other events like all over the region, so it, it's pretty impressive. And I hope I mean Tori is the third um, you know San Francisco coordinator for Western Math that I've like been in contact with because there used to be quite a bit of turnover. And I hope that Tori will be there for a while, but it seems like she really likes it and she's really engaged. So go Tori. So cool. okay. What Thank is you. the fifth grade um, class petition from Fort Yeah, Maine? so I did. I sent a link to it. Um, they sent a, they sent a letter to the town council this week, and I also the link I sent um, was like to an indie article. I haven't seen it like published elsewhere yet. Uh, so what it was is that it was following up, I believe, on the activities where the Fort River fifth grader classes in the spring that they met with town council members. They came to like a mock town hall. As as Chris said, they biked with the Amherst PD, like bike officer Casey. 
and they were advocating for just my, more bike infrastructure in Amherst and um, and safer routes, particularly like along like Belchertown Road, Route Nine, and um, and near Fort River. And so to me, I think, unless I'm misremembering and Chris may know more, but I think it was a fifth grade last year too, which of course those fifth graders are now sixth graders. So it seems like it's being led more by the teachers or those classrooms than. Yeah, I reached much. out to, um, I reached out to the teacher and told her about the town council, um, you know, considering the, um, the safety zones and she has not reached out to me yet, but she wanted to talk about whether or not it made sense for the current fifth grade to do another project. Um, uh, sort of. Yeah. So last year they created um, a website, you know, they were focused on just more sustainability and reducing emissions and things like that. And that's part of why they were promoting the biking. At that time they did a survey and they presented the results at the town council meeting um, about what type of bike um, infrastructure people prefer. Like, do they prefer off-road paths or on-road paths or bike lanes or things like that? It was a pretty impressive presentation, you know, from a bunch of fifth graders. Um, in this latest thing that they sent to the council, which they sent to the council on Monday, um, they sent their petition, but it also included 60 pages of signatures, which what? is incredible, right? I don't know how many were on each page, but there were 60 pages of signatures that they got from youth in Amherst and also surrounding towns in support of safe cycling. So what their petition said is it said, you know, that we're students from these two fifth grade classes at Fort River and we're trying to reduce the use of fossil fuels and they want to make more safe biking opportunities for families in Amherst and they um, they asked the town to prioritize the planning construction of family friendly separated bike lanes and off road bike paths, including on Belchertown Road and um, they also asked the town to prioritize updating the Pelham Road sidewalk. So, and also their third request was that the town revisit, update, and implement the bike ped plan that was prepared back in 2018 and 2019. So, I mean, they have some great ideas. I don't know. I just wanted to share it, you know, as something that they've been doing. And um, and I'm impressed that they had 60 pages of signatures. Uh, yeah, those I mean, one, are great. One thing is, and it does look, I mean, I saw when I was driving on Belcher Town Road recently, right, I can see that the bike lanes are there for that part that was getting done this year, which goes just a little bit past Colonial Village. Is that right, Guilford? Like going, mm -hmm. going towards Belchertown? Yeah. Um, Stops right there. So, I mean, it looks great. The road is paved there. I think there's now the crosswalk near Colonial Village, right? Is that right? There is now. But is there a signage there yet for the crosswalk? The sign is there, but the flashing beacons okay, are Okay, the not. flashing beacons aren't there. Um, yeah, that all looks great. Uh, it seems that, I mean, one, it would be nice if there's more, um, like there's some better transition a little bit if anybody is using the bike lanes because you get to that piece where the new section ends and the road just narrows and if you were in the bike lane it's like yikes <laughs> what, what like what happens um but i know you've talked about guilford that you know, like the goal of the town is to extend the bike lanes and so on out out towards it um, is. echo hill and amherst woods and so on over time so so it'd be great to add that piece. Um, and this idea that they have, I mean, we've talked about Pelham Road, like they were saying prioritize updating Pelham Road and Guilford, you've talked about the challenges with that in terms of that the right of way there is really small and the sidewalk's narrow and you'd have to, it'd have to be land takings in order to do much. Yeah, which is actually, you know, coming back from the South again, it's like they blow things out and, make it fit make it all fit it's like okay. um, yeah. if you were to do that in amherst you would get rid of all the houses on pelham and amherst amherst main street and pelham road all those houses would go away yeah. because you'd be in the house so it's like people who want it just doesn't fit doesn't fit yeah i mean it's out, there's a lot more land well and i remember like sometimes when i visit on the cape the last time I like stayed in a house out there, that there was a road that the town was looking at 
significantly expanding like the sidewalk infrastructure and biking infrastructure on this one section of road. And there were so many signs up on about it is like people who want to have that additional infrastructure, but then people who don't want any takings and who want to keep the footprint of the road the same as it is. And I mean, people start to feel pretty conflicted if you like add all that. I mean, it's good, but it makes everything wider and bigger and it can take people's property. It does, but then so, you then you need to well. So. So anyway, Gilford, are you frozen? I think you're freezing some. I'm oh, freezing. Okay. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> uh, uh, um, and the other thing too is that they were talking about separated bike lanes. Uh, so I don't know how realistic separated bike lanes are on narrow roads. Um, and also you need to have like specialized equipment if you're going to keep those bike lanes clear. So there are some big metropolitan areas that have that do like Boston has a number of them. And I don't know, some city, I think it was like Chicago, they were changing a lot of their bike lanes. over. So it can keep bicyclists safe in some ways, but I just don't think it's going to be realistic for Amherst, but I really do like when there is a road width to do it. And I think both the research shows that both bicyclists and drivers feel more comfortable that if you can at least have like a buffered area, like some of what like Hadley has done in route nine, like a little bit of buffer between the vehicle, tra like the car truck travel lane and the bike travel lane. It With doesn't seem, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem as scary. Like, I don't know, Kim, do you ever bike out on route nine, like in Hadley and no. But Hadley had to do that. They didn't want to do that. They actually didn't want to do that. It's the opposite. Yeah. They were made to do that. So well, Massio team made them do it. I think. Yes. No, Mass. Uh, there's a long story behind that. But I mean, every, we just spent, we just plopped $10, $12 million down in Hadley, and there's no zero improvement to public transit, yeah. which is the goal of the project originally. Right. It, it's actually, I, I I would say it's decreased because, yeah. They have bus stops so the buses can pull off and get stuck in traffic and can't pull back on the road. Right. But, yeah. I mean, originally they were actually going to put a center lane in Route 9 for oh. buses. Mm. And they have two traps, so two lanes in the center. And then um, it had all sorts of co computations and, and things, but it was really, uh, it was meant to put, make transit better and then to do um uh, more capacity for cars to turn and safety for, safer for cars to turn and then do the other stuff they did and all they did was do big the bike others. lanes that won't get plowed won't get plowed when they've yeah. done the sidewalks there's sidewalks which some of them may not get plowed either but no, then, the sidewalks won't get plowed and then there's the turning lanes so that's good right and they um, have added and they have added some connectivity like to the rail trail right i think no they haven't and they've added can i ask a question about um back to fort river do you guys mind sure um Guilford, the um, Echo Hill parents are pretty loud about, you know, wanting a way to commute to um, the Fort River campus that feels safe. And one idea I think I must must have emailed you about this is um, it would it be possible to ask the private landowner, Amethyst Farm, who owns the floodplain, uh, it's an agricultural restriction, um, to plan uh, or do an off-road path there between Echo Hill and the campus? Um, if you actually look at it, you do not need that person. Um, what you need is for the Conservation Commission to be willing to put something across conservation land. Okay. We, we talked about that a while ago, I think. Of, I don't I don't remember the Conservation Commission entering it. It was a long time before. Yeah. Because this has been a perennial issue even before the new school. Okay. Was but but it's, now aren't isn't there other to get there. But there's other conservation land like around Hickory Ridge, right? In their building. There's a connection going from you know Pomeroy out to Yeah, Jimmy. out to 
I mean, East Hadley Road, is that is that a lot different with the Fort River? Like, I mean, wouldn't the Con Conservation Commission have to approve those trails too? Well, and you need a bridge, no matter. Oh, okay. Here, I'll share my map. Sure. Thank you. Is it two bridges or just one that would be needed? There would be, <clears throat> can you see the area? No. I didn't push the button. You haven't shared yet, yeah. The, can you see that? So Fort yeah. River's here. Okay. And this is the neighborhood that John renamed nameless for the rest of the time. Um, so you have to cross Fort River. Ah, uh, the Fort River. Mm -hmm. At least once. Um, and then this property here. Here. Oh, it is. Oh. Here. I guess you do need Amethyst Farm. I thought that I thought the conservation had taken one of these parcels. Yeah, so Amethyst Farm has to give you, and then you have to cross over the, you have to build a bridge to get across. But this piece here is, or this piece here is um, Echo Hill. So you can get to here, and then you, yeah, you have to go across it somewhere through here. You have to cross the Fort River, and then you got a bunch of little things to cross in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, give, I'll turn the aerial on. I thought they, I thought Conservation had bought this one. Conservation mm -hmm. has that little section right behind the, um, there's like an office complex. Yeah, it's this one here. Yeah. But they oh, were talking mean... about buying this one, I thought. <clears throat> um, wait, do you mean that little complex on like Pelham Amherst Road? Mm -hmm. The one near Fort River? Like that's got it's like got the... it. it has a community garden on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. it's just it's just highlighted so one here. Uh -huh. You could okay. do that. You just have to decide do you want lights on it because you have to, it's dark at night and dark in the morning. And you'd have to maintain it in the winter if you're gonna have that path, right? And it would and... be not that hard to maintain in that way. It's just do you light it? Do you not light it? It wouldn't need lights because it's it's not the kids never are leaving in the darkness. No, like, it's well, it's early, it's close. <laughs> but early yeah. in, they're eight and like you know three, so no, that's true. But it's dark by four. But yeah, my my instinct is, I mean, I have no idea. I you know, obviously, parents from Echo Hill need to like someone. Somebody needs to decide that they're going to be the one. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, it's just it's just useful. This is helpful. Thanks, Guilford. Thank you, Guilford. Thank I think this, well, that's too, that's, that comes out to Belchtown Road. I mean, I think this parcel here is now, might be going on the market. But the sidewalk is right, continuing to be improved along Belchtown Road. Yeah. I mean, that new section's improved, and then, yeah, like yeah. as you expand the work along Belcher Town Road, that it will also be the sidewalk yeah. will be fixed too. So, if I mean, if they were to buy this piece, yeah, they could get. Although the all these all these kids have to go a longer route. This is yeah. much narrower, mm -hmm. quite quicker. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's a little challenging too, right? Because sometimes. People are talking about biking a lot more on the sidewalk, but then other people are saying you have to make sure that nobody's biking on the sidewalk. And it's hard, I think, like with younger, like with kids and things that, um, like, I just don't see like elementary kids biking on the road on Beltertown no. Road, even There's if you have a bike no lane that you would want them on the sidewalk. And then, I mean, yeah. there are some of those conflicts. The kids would have to bike on the sidewalk. There is no way you would want kids on the, that street. Uh, no way. But the sidewalk could handle it. It's just not a great, it's a right, long, yeah. bumpy sidewalk and it's very narrow. All right. So let's see. So the next item, Guilford, I did, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about the chapter 90, section 17C, like the new signage is up and there was that news release that came out from the town that I linked to in my email. But do you have any kind of quick overview you can give us? 
no, it's all, it's all in place and the police are all, they're going to enforce it. Um, so let's we'll see how it goes. So, and I did really, I really like to, and I'll just share my screen if it works. Hold on. This, like the GIS map that was up, like that was linked to in that piece. Um, you guys can see that, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so what, this is a great map. Now, does this include like every road that has, um, Yep, that's other been speed updated. limits? Okay. If, if you don't see, if it's not colored, it doesn't have a speed limit on it. Okay, so like, for example, um, I know I get a little less on this map, but like Heatherstone is, because so when I was on Heatherstone admiring the little mini roundabouts today, like I did see that when you enter that part of Echo Hill from um, the Pelham Road side, there's immediately like a 30 mile per hour speed limit. But I don't think it's a, there's a speed limit on here unless I'm missing it's it. Not, it's not supposed to be there. Those signs will be coming down shortly. Oh, okay. So did you find when you got, when you and Jason, when your team went through it and inventoried it, are there a lot of places that have speed limit signs that aren't like official and they should be removed? There are. Again, in addition to the Heatherstone one? There, there are others, yes. Where did those come from? Um, someone, someone got tired of beating their head on the wall saying no. And they just said, well, let's put them up. You're saying individuals just like ordered a sign and put no, it up? No, the it's not, it's not, the town did it. The town, right? the, town mean, no. the town got tired of arguing about it and someone in the town stopped being, yeah, someone in the town said, put them up. They've been up for a long time, over 20 no, years. No, I mean, I think some of them have, yeah. Um, and I was also curious about the ones, like, I, I know there's some near Amherst College, near the Amherst College fields, or, like, some of these other ones that are labeled, that are 25 miles an hour. So will those stay up, or will those come down? If it's those... on this map, if it's on the map you see here, uh -huh. it's, it's got a its own uh, speed regulation. Right. So the question is like, you know, I was in this training on some of this, but if um if the if the neighborhood speed limit is twenty five and now the statutory speed limit is twenty five, at that meeting, um the state, you know, the DOT like state engineers guidance was that you would take down the twenty five mile per hour signs that are because they're matching the statutory speed limit, that you wouldn't have them signed in the neighborhoods. They recommend it, but that's a statutory speed limit, so it, we're leaving them up. Okay. And where is this little 20 mile per hour zone, do you know? I couldn't find it on here. Um, you'd, uh, hold on, I think I... <laughs> I was just curious. It's I have like to a really zoom color. in on it. Do you, do you know what part of town it's in? uh no oh okay all right i, I couldn't they're, find it either they're the oldest ones if you actually i got the uh, i got this over hold on so i mean my overall take on this map right is that most of the main corridors in amherst are they do have posted speed limits that continue to apply and yes. that most of the neighborhood streets in Amherst, even the ones that may have signs, they don't actually have like speed limits that apply. Um, except for the underlying statutory speed limit. Is that sort of your take on it too? Yes. And and I know too, I mean, one thing that's come up, and this is just a question for you, it's more of a comment, but I know that one thing that's happened in Springfield is that, I mean, they Springfield approved the 25 mile per hour speed limit. And then in certain neighborhoods, they wanted, and they had streets that were posted with a different speed limit, they wanted to remove those and have the underlying 25 mile per hour speed limit apply because it's lower. Um, and that there really didn't seem, Is do you know if there's like an easy process if neighborhoods want that or anything? Um, well, it's just, it's, my understanding is just rescinding the speed limit, which has, requires you to, do something. I don't remember exactly. I mean, are you it. required to do like a study to rescind the speed limits or? I think you are. Oh, okay. 
So like, for example, like if we zoom in here, oh, sorry, I'm trying to, so like, for example, right, this is um, Lincoln and Sunset, my neighborhood, Kim's neighborhood. And like, I'm sure that now that you have the underlying 25 mile per hour speed limit that the residents of these streets would be happy to have a 25 mile per hour speed limit there and not the 30, for example, I don't know, maybe. Uh, they could ask. But, and also there's currently signage on McClellan that says 30. Yeah, that'll come out. Okay, all right. But it's, Jason, but, uh-huh. Jason went through and pretty much kind of uh, got the map in the right order. So if it's not on the map, it shouldn't be there. Got it. That's great. So in, I guess in the GIS, right, is there like a table attached to it or is there a table available? There, it was this, there is a table. That's how they made it. Yes. Right. Okay. Oh, a table that I meant that somebody could like export out of it. You can't, I mean, yeah, you can export any of the data out of it. Um, okay. All right. But you, I just you have to have, clear. Uh huh. What? No, go ahead. You have to get rights to ask for it, for it and then they export it out. Okay. You would and just then, copy it. Um, could you just clarify the process for how you would go about lowering your speed limit in your neighborhood? You would. No, I don't know what it is. I have to go read it. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, it wouldn't necessarily go through town council. It would. No, it would go through the, town council. It would. Oh, jeepers. The, que okay. the question is, does it have to go through the state? Yeah, um, there is some guidance on that. Um, I was looking on one of the Mass DOT pages about it. So I can send what I saw. Though I think some of it, you know, some of it may be outdated, but. All right. Okay, thank you. It's really helpful to have this. Thank you for Jason for going through all these. Yeah, it was made ideas. a long time ago. Uh huh. We just had to update it. So, will you be sharing this data then, like back to the state DOT, so that they would update their road layer, or if no? they ask? If they ask, well, maybe they don't know to ask. They ask but... all the time for stuff. Oh, they do. Okay. Yeah, they, they actually cruise our website. Our... Oh. They cruise town's websites and okay. then if they can't get it, if there's not a way to get it, they'll then ask. The D the D D O T does it, D uh D E P does it. Um and then and I know re the last time I was looking before um like there is a list on the Mass DOT website about the communities that have um adopted chapter ninety seventeen C. And Amherst isn't on that list. Like, and I think it's that they expect towns to report in that they've adopted yep. it or not. It's been reported in. Maybe they okay. Just All right. I don't know. I mean, there are some other towns that aren't on it either. Um, like Deerfield, I know Deerfield adopted it, and then and didn't did Hadley just adopt it as well at town meeting, Guilford? Um, I was busy doing something else that night. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think they might have. Well, now that you're not on the select board anymore in Hadley, right? So yeah, well, I didn't. We I didn't have to go. That was the 14th, wasn't it? I think it was last week. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I think a... I think they adopted it. I mean, it sounded the news coverage. It sounded like a few people weren't sure about it, but overall, it got enough votes to yeah. pass. I was watching uh, a very disappointing game of hockey that night. Well, that's okay, and um. So Heatherstone is I, so I put Heatherstone on the list just because the last time we talked, you weren't sure about what was going to happen with Heatherstone in terms of that. It sounds like um, the DPW had continued to make changes to Heatherstone and those roundabouts to make them better and more visible. And and you had told us, uh, Guilford, about how some I people- I think we're all set. You're all set. So now it's good. Uh, we're all set. It's going to stay in place for at least six okay. months. Then we'll and, discuss it again. Now, is there um, so I so is it working okay with larger vehicles to go through there? Is that um, some drivers need some attention to how they do it. Um, other drivers they definitely end up on the island every time. Um, some vehicles, I guess, is the way to say it. 
Do you mean like buses? Like like school I buses? I think the buses. I think it's the buses pretty are tight. Really so when I went there today um, to look at it, and um, and I re I really like how it's designed, but I did notice like even in my small car that it's like pretty tight. Like especially if you have to go like to nine o'clock or or even go all the way around like you would on a larger roundabout. Um, and there, there, there were traffic cones like on all the islands and the roundabouts, sort of like at the edges of them, to make them more visible to drivers. But wouldn't mm -hmm. that, would those interfere with, like any larger vehicles trying to use it? They would. They should be coming off. They must be okay. coming behind on signs. The signs okay. weren't up, right? Were they? Yeah. Yeah, so let's see. So the southmost one had the yield and roundabout signs on them, and the middle one had the signs in one direction. They had the signs in the northbound direction and not the southbound direction. And the north one, the one closest to Pelham Road, it didn't have the signs yet. Okay. Um. So yeah, maybe that's why they're there. But I was just yeah. thinking about, you know, if I was a larger vehicle and I was trying to navigate it, even just to go through like all those signs would kind of be in my way. <laughs> well, it's good to hear. And I mean, is there concern about those with the plows or anything, or you think that they'll be okay? They'll be fine. I mean, oh, they'll be fine. How much oh. snow are we going to get? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking about that, even with the sidewalk there, the sidewalk there is beautiful too. And I know that some people were concerned about who's going to clear the sidewalk, but you know, over time there, we won't have that much snow. Um. Wait, um, I'm sorry if I missed it, but Guilford, has the decision been made to make that permanent? That um... Oh, no. He said six months. Sorry, I missed that. Thanks. Thanks. So that's great. That's great. So we'll see it in the spring. And, and are you still getting much feedback from people about it? Yes, no. Um, I don't uh, think we are. Okay. Although, I think there was one email last earlier this week. Um, but I haven't got gone back to read it. Um, there's not much. I mean, good. It all it all looks good. Um, I imagine I imagine somebody's transportation class will probably go out there in the winter and examine it or something and look it over and. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, and the crosswalks look good, and I really like to the crosswalk at um, Pelham road is like set back you know so that's not like a huge long crossing it's like a shorter crossing and yay it's great so thank you thank you for doing that do you see like it sounds like potentially that there could be other ones if this all continues to go well um we'll see <laughs> okay well just i know that other neighborhoods right and you've hear from them too have asked for other like traffic calming and Maybe. So. We proposed these. We, we proposed something like this on Lincoln and Sunset when they were having all those discussions about traffic calming there. Right. Um, cool. You can um you can experiment on Butterfield Terrace. There's only <laughs> you know like six or seven of us, and we're we would love anything yeah. besides the potholes. To we, be, we got uh, the potholes for you. Maybe you could have a little bump. So is your is Butterfield Terrace is that a town road or a UMass road? Um, it's town road, but then there's all the UMass parking on the side. Right. Yeah. It's all UMass is parking. It's not the town's parking. Right. Right. So, yeah. On the street. On the street or mm -hmm. the parking lot. Oh, I did not. There's parking that. on the street. Ah. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Right. Closer. Well, in front of the dorm and in front of right. international yeah. student. But wait, mm -hmm. you can't park in front of your house on the street, can you, Chris? I don't think so. Nobody yeah. can. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that I meant like the there's no parking. Yeah. In the, the in the oh oh interesting. After five um, o'clock, you can probably park on the other side. Yeah. You can park in the lot when yeah. they're not Maybe. enforcing it. I don't know. I'm just offering us up as another. Um, <laughs> we're happy to be lab rats in the traffic calming tactics category. We're, we're using inverted pothole, inverted inverted uh, speed humps for you. <laughs> wait a minute well i think there's there's All much right, worse there's much worse potholes in other places wait a minute um so amity the roundabout at amity and university so guilford when you met with us last time attack right you said you couldn't tell us anything and literally like there had already been a news release or at least somebody had sent it out that it had been funded which is excellent 
And uh, so I think it's great that the state came out and looked at the Pomeroy one and then also funded the, the Amity University one. And has the council approved that yet or does it still officially have to get the council's blessing? I think it is going on the second. To second, the okay, got it. But it's already funded and it's designed, it seems like. It's not It's not gone through. We have final design to go through. So. Uh, okay. And so do you think that that would be um, built then in the spring, like in this next construction year? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We haven't got the grant yet, so oh, none of the but, you got, but you heard that you got the grant, right? Yeah, we haven't got the contract, so we don't know. Oh, okay, got it. Oh, uh, cool. Cool, very cool. Um, great. They may pull and back I, all. They may pull back all the grants. You know, after the after the election yeah, and the inauguration. Right. Yeah, that's. They need the money to support the state. <laughs> um, I hope not. <laughs> And then I was wondering about um, the pot line and 116 project. Like, is that, is that proceeding? Going on? It's, it's going, going on right now? Okay. Um, yes. Haven't you seen it? It won't, yeah. it won't, it won't be, I don't, it's not going to be finished till the spring though. Right. Okay. But the sidewalk, nice. the pull-offs and sidewalks are in. And right? is the crosswalk in? And no. Oh. oh. But the okay. pull-off is the, at least. The, yeah. The bus pull-off is in. It's we right widened on the Robert side, and we have to. Oh, that's great. We have the islands to do. I think that I'm really, no. I'm really impressed at all the work you guys are doing. Um, and do we have like you had mentioned on the Belcher Town Road project that there's no RFBs yet? Do you have RFBs yet? Or are you still waiting on those? Well, we asked we asked for some free ones from the oh, state. Oh right, yeah, right. And it seems to be drat. They seem to be. I don't know. I hope they come through. So well, it's it's interesting. They they want you to submit app, submit locations, but then you have to have them up in six months. Um, so you okay. gotta be pretty far along in your project to ask right. for them. Yeah, but then they take a year to get them to you. What? Uh, that's what it's gonna probably be. I don't know. So it's I don't know. Well, hopefully, I hope again. I hope the state comes through and everything on that. Well, we'll just have to take our money and buy them if they don't earn. Right. We'll have to see. Um, cool. So there was an an email went out to some of the committees um, and out on the like a news blast that the town sent out about residential capital requests and that they're due by the 16th and that, um, you know, there's a form that people can submit and then it goes to JCPC and JCPC considers the requests and, um, I'm, I have had questions about this process every year a little bit, just in terms of that. One of the things that members of JCPC tend to say is they say, well, is this request coming from a department? You know, and like, is it a department priority and things? And if it's not, then it doesn't necessarily get funding. In fact, most of the time it doesn't, it seems. But like this year with the school zone thing, like Jeremy Anderson's request, he had requested speed feedback signs and those got supported so we'll see it seems like there still should be a better process or also and also just questions about how they prioritize it um because every year it comes up like that some neighborhood will request things and is the neighborhood that requests them the one that gets like the traffic calming or is do we need to be more equitable about it so i don't know so i mean a long time ago right we had worked on the complete streets plan and prioritizing and and helping kind of develop a framework for that decision making but yeah. it, it never really went anywhere i think <laughs> i don't know and no, now it's, just... we have to wait till we have a commission for any of that to move forward that's what it seems like to me so not that that's i don't know what do you think gilford or can will there can we have any of that before there's a commission or Yes, I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, okay. I would hope so, but but I've also been heard that we might not like fill any tax vacancies until we have a commission, and that might not be that soon. I mean, it will be hopefully like within the next year, but we never know. 
Okay, so we do have like 20 minutes left. Um, oh, and I didn't put on the agenda about when we want to have our next meeting. Um, so it sounds like there's going to be this meeting, this combined meeting with um, TSO and the Disability Access Advisory Committee on the 12th. Like, do we want to try to meet before that? Do we have much we have to talk about on the 5th? Probably, and then... And then the other Thursday would be on the 19th, which is like right kind of in the middle of holidays. So are we saying that our one meeting in December should just be this joint meeting? I think so. It sounds like Kim, that's what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I think what I think it's an important meeting and hopefully no, definitely. many of us can show up. Yeah, I agree. So Chris, you agree? Yeah. I, um, yeah. I mean, I would love to have another meeting, but I, I, I feel crunched for time and I agree that of everything that we could be discussing this topic and the group yeah, would right. take precedence. Okay, Stefan, any opinion on this? Okay. Um, yeah, I'll be actually away the first week of December from about the okay. 1st to the 8th or 9th. So All right. the, the second one, the second option is better. Okay. All right. So there we have it. Um, and yes. I know that one thing is I do, it seems like a lot of times the council will change like the TSO membership in January. But go ahead, Kim. Yeah, I just wanted to um, uh, discuss if there's anything that we should in particular be looking at. Like we, you know, since we are not having another meeting, this is the only meeting that we'll have. Are there... Um, plan you know can can the plans be sent out the week before so that we can all really look at them and maybe yeah take, absolutely you know so that we can all really be invested in this meeting I think yeah I'll be happy to share whatever um TSO yeah. shares out and in fact it's been in like TSO packets before I don't think they'll be releasing anything additional that's a great yeah. idea so that um, like we can all just be like, okay, this is our duty for the month. Right. We're gonna like yep. fill out, like be present at this meeting, you know. And then um, and as I was saying, I I guess we'll have to see what happens with TSO in terms of like when they change over the members, because it's possible some members might leave. I know that TSO has but been it pretty be for this meeting, that meeting. No, no, no. It would be like in January, yeah. like after January, the the president will look at like what committees people want to serve on the council sure. serve two year terms. So they usually offer people the opportunity to switch like halfway through. Um, one thing that TSO has been doing is they have been looking at the commission idea and putting it on their agenda at each meeting, but they're not putting it as like the only item on the agenda. They're just fitting it in with all the other things that TSO is also looking at. So they're being methodical about it, but it also means it's a sort of elongated process. So I'm not sure what that will mean too, like in terms of if TSO, when TSO like changes over, I can ask TSO about that, but they seem like they're being pretty thorough about it. Um, they will come back to the council at some point. So I don't know if it will come back to the council with recommendations or whether it will be one of the carryover items that they're gonna continue to look at. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, Guilford, have you been going to the TSO meetings? Were you at the last one? Oh yes, they're exciting. Very, did were they talking about the commission much? Um, that meeting they, or? they are talking about the commission. They're taking it in bite-sized pieces. Right. Yeah. So if you actually go to the video of the TSO and you kind of just scan it until you see um, George start start talking. When okay. George starts talking, they're talking about the commission. Okay. And then I've been trying to, to I've been trying to watch all the recordings, but I haven't like gotten through them. But yeah. Okay. If you just, well, Power when George start too. when George starts talking, okay, good. Yes. <laughs> okay, George I can I can out. send that out to to see if anybody wants to follow all that, but yeah. But they also write up some pretty good um summaries in their report that they send to the council, so we don't all need to watch these meetings. Um. All right. So we now have about fifteen minutes, so we won't set any meetings beyond the twelfth until um next year, and uh. I mean, I did just want to have a discussion. I mean, a lot when I was putting together this agenda, I was thinking about like these are mainly um, like informational items, not where any decisions are required by TAC. And that I do think it's good to have a discussion about priorities 
like what we see as the priorities for TAC, we used to have that review pretty much like every fall. And I remember too that Guilford would have the list of um, requested improvement projects that had been submitted to him through various means. And we'd look at his list and then we'd think about what we wanted on our list and things like that. So, um, and we can continue to have that discussion in January. Uh, but like, in I would be interested to hear from people like what are people's priorities right now? I mean, I know Chris has been working a lot on Safe Routes to School, which is awesome. But Chris, if you have other priorities or Kim or Stefan, if you guys have thoughts about what we need to be doing. Well, I, I, well, you mean, you mean the priorities for. Yeah. For TAC. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think just getting our, um, our map in order, I think is something that we need to really do our, by our, Yep. And uh, I mean, that seems to me as number one. And we we could also revisit all of the kind of, I mean, things have changed a lot, right? Especially around the new school, which mm -hmm. since the last time we tried to look at like networks and whatever. But I think that is the most valuable stuff that we do. I think. Sure. No, I think that's true. The map is a priority for me and advancing this commission. Yeah. Um, and also just, you know, looking at, I mean, I think the town has made some great inroads this year, like on a lot of these things related to speed management um, and adopting this 25 miles an hour. And now we have a safety zone and we're doing more school zones. And I mean, there's a lot of great things happening, um, though there are some places still, I think, where people don't feel as, you know, so safe and so just continuing to advance some of that. Yeah, you know, I, I also, honestly, I also feel like it would be good to get some people who, I don't know, a, a, long, a, a number of years ago, you know, we had a few members who were um, on the committee who were more of car people. And there are a lot of car people in town. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really useful to get, that point of view as well because because you know there there are a lot of people in town who are car people mm. and we also had people on the committee who were in you know business people who are interested in parking and 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 I feel like like you know and you know also people who mainly use the bus like I feel like we need more diversity on our committee that way it would legitimize what we do a lot more so well and i think i mean that's one reason that i've been asking right ever since we've had we had the vacancy when tate left like tate had been doing transit um he left in september of last year right so it's been like over a year and um i mean i would really like to fill those vacancies and also expand and like, I know, Kim, you've been on the TAC like for almost like forever. And now I've been on the TAC for almost like five, six years too. I but mean, I we're, think, but, but, we we're, but we're not going to be, we're not going to be on the TAC forever. I also just want to pull in more energy and more people. Yeah. And I mean, I get stuck in my own things and I want to hear more voices. I want to hear more diversity. And, um, but, but I think like we had that a few years ago yeah. when I first started there were more di different people, like with different points of view. I love, I love our point of view, <laughs> of course, because I feel like we're all very like-minded, but we're not complete representatives of the town. So, you know, I just feel like. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so one thing is with the commission, one thing to keep in mind is that there would be less, there would be less resident representation on the commission likely. That would probably be like three resident members. The current proposal is three resident members, you know, with different backgrounds, and then um, somebody from the Disability Access Advisory Committee, you know, if somebody from that committee wanted to serve, and then having staff, like for example, from DPW and police and. Yeah. Um, but all those are good. Planning I mean, all and. No, opinion. and I really, I like the idea of having all the staff in the room because like, we're just advisory, we're just residents. Like, it's really important to have those points of view represented and you can actually make decisions, right? Like we're not making decisions. 
Yeah. So, um, but, but even on our own, I mean, I, I yeah. just, you know, so maybe, Chris, I'm, what? Not, I'm not a driving person. I'm not a parking person. You're a I, super biking person. <laughs> I don't, and running. And uh, walking yeah. And, and now it's but, yeah. But I feel like we could use right. more. Absolutely. At least, at least one person who is more like, like. So Chris, what do you think? Or Stefan, do you guys have ideas too? regarding the commission well no regarding kind of well you know your priorities or what you think TAC needs to prioritize in addition to what we've been talking about or reiterating what yeah, I mean, Kim I would, and I have said and I would continue to say um you know safe routes to school I would say the Fort River traffic pattern and um I think I um bump Kim that getting the master plan updated and before town council um seems like a totally worthy goal and you know with i know that we don't have all of our vacancies filled but with the people that we do have we could probably do it you know we could make make it happen so um to me those would rise as um priorities, although I'm realizing that the Fort River traffic pattern, I don't, yeah. I guess maybe the, the TAC could be um, in, influential or instrumental in helping um, with forums and other ways to continue to collect the appropriate feedback that we need on that proposal. So just to put a finer point on what I mean by the new Fort River traffic pattern. You're muted, Tracy. I was asking uh, Stefan if he has anything to add about priorities. Um, <clears throat> in terms of like transportation topics, not necessarily, but I think that maybe making um, the TAC or you know whatever it ends up being called as it, if as it becomes um, as it changes next year potentially, right? Um, maybe making it more. I guess that it's pretty open to the public, but maybe more. I guess maybe quote for lack of a better term, advertising it more to the public to see if either they come to us or or we can encourage the counselors in the town to maybe work uh, to kind of I guess I guess to promote more so the tax so people are more understanding of of it existing and of it you know being a forum kind of to piggyback what Chris um, Chris just said but piggyback off that and say have them come to us and have them be more open with issues, either things that have, you know, new issues or existing issues or things that have kind of fallen by the wayside. Right. And then I mean, I, also, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, like, looping back, I think, on existing issues, like, we've obviously over the past, right. this past year, we've had, you know, for example, the one that comes up for me is the um, the uh, the Cushman Day School. Um, right. I know we touched on that er very early this year, Jane, end of last year early this year so we're just kind of looping back and seeing kind of what's changed reevaluating um, things and yeah. it fix things versus okay it's we did it all right next thing it's like okay well it's maybe i don't know three six months later whatever it is are there other complaints about, about it existing complaints about the same issue new complaints and has it fixed stuff so yeah no i think um you had raised um the idea of you know, going back on the Henry, so that's a safety zone, right? It's the first, mm -hmm. it's the town's first safety zone. It would be great to hear about how that works. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd mentioned at the last meeting that I'm interested in having a meeting that also, and I had suggested maybe with TSO that it could be a joint meeting where we also mm -hmm. have like somebody from police, like talking about, you know, enforcement and their side of the speed management, like all these zones are great, but right. like, is there the capacity to enforce it? Um, one of the one of the proposed roles, like assuming that the commission goes forward, is one proposed mm -hmm. role is to provide some clarity um, for residents about when people have a concern and they mm -hmm. want the town to look at it, like that that could be a place where people could go and where their complaints could be heard, and then mm -hmm. they would respond back to the public. I mean, currently, and I get cc'd on some of the emails on this. There are some people who have contacted town staff or counselors like repeatedly about issues 
and specific issues and they don't feel like they've received satisfactory responses for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think like people are, you know, somewhat disillusioned with that and they don't know what to do. And I mean, that's why I brought up like even the JCPC is like, mm -hmm. I think there's sometimes a perception, right? If somebody submits a resident request that it could like kind of rise. Not. Um, so, I mean, I do really see that a role for the commission, assuming it could mm -hmm. be forward would to be like to some address some of that and Right. I mean, I remember one meeting I was at with, um, it was like one of the, res um, sorry, the neighborhood like council meetings that somebody was there from the DPW and they said that sometimes when people report stuff online to see click fix, that sometimes there are issues that don't involve the DPW. Like, for example, it could be on a state road or it could be like, you know, non-town property or things like that. And that, you know, I think so sometimes like nothing's really done with that um, concern. And I understand that, but at the same time, I don't know if that's always clear to what that. Yeah. And, and also we could also do some outreach, like in terms of, right, there's going to be a new roundabout. Um, we still have back in parking, like things like that. We could also do outreach around those things about the five foot, you know, the four foot law, like as Kevin had mentioned at our last meeting, like some of the advocacy around or even just like promotion of yeah. some of those things. So there's lots we can do. Yeah. So I don't know. But right. thank you. And we're grateful to Guilford for being here. And yeah, thank you, Guilford. Everything you're doing. And, you do, <laughs> and Chris is thank gonna be you. calling you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye, thank bro. you. Bye. 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 Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. See you in December. Bye. Oh, bye.